Okay, so next and our final speaker for today is Bridget Kimsey. Bridget is an author who has 28 years of experience working in the healing arts and sciences. She is a research assistant and is working on a master's of science with a concentration, sorry, master's of science and space studies with a concentration in astronomy. And she's talking today about a native perspective on humans in space. Hello, welcome. Just gonna load my PowerPoint here. Okay. Just get it. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. Here we go. Sorry about that. All right. So, hi, my name is Bridget Kimsey, and I won't go too much into my background. Always please um, let me know if you have any questions or thoughts. Um, so I am a United States citizen, as well as a member of the Delaware tribe or the Lenape Nation, currently situated in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, and I use both of my lineage lineages in my work. I've been in healthcare and author and researcher for about 30 years um, from an indigenous research method application and methodology, as well as Western science methods and methodologies. Um, and I've been inside of working with humans physically, emotionally, mentally, and energetically, as well as along the spectrum of biology to chemistry to physics. And I am, as Dr. Watts pointed out, um, with APU as a Master of Science candidate in space studies with a concentration in astronomy. So I'll be brief here in my observing of objective patterns in full global human history that concern me. If we look when things have gone well and when things have not gone well, objectively it appears that currently in the space industry, we are repeating patterns that have proven not to go well for humankind and for the earth. And if they are not addressed now, what will be the outcome? So this is my presentation on a native perspective on humans in space, looking at human structural systems, technology, healthy integration of technology, and best practices to explore and expand into space. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. I just screwed that up, but that's okay. Here we go. So um, we have, um, let me see if I can get us back here. I'm sorry. Um, let's see the presentation. There we are. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so here we have on one side Professor Kraft's work on the Indians of Lenape Hokan, and my tribe is about 10,000 years old, uh, mostly nomadic until we um, landed on the eastern seaboard. And on the other side, you have a picture of our current um, tribal headquarters in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. We are also um, in Kansas as well. And so I bring up about exploration and expansion into new lands, and also the integration and discovery of new technology and how that was safely integrated. So 10,000 years, and we are coming from, um, I, I would say archeological digs and documentation and research has shown coming from Greenland along the Dakotas and into the Eastern seaboard, also from New Mexico into the Eastern seaboard, are also coming in the 1300s from Greenland down the waterways into the Eastern seaboard. So there had to be some way to explore that was safe for the tribe and healthy for the species we encountered and for the environment. And then we also developed new technology and integrated that safely. So in the next slide, again, these are just artistic um, you know, representations from archaeological information from digs and from information from Dutch colonialists, as well as our own background. But you see farming, longhouses, um, different clothing. Um, and so what I'm just pointing out here is um, Inside of exploring lands and developing a base and adding on to systems to live in, and while doing this, all uncovering new technology and integrating this technology helpfully, there are practices that have developed and that have helped the Lenape to do this well and safely for all involved. This includes humans, other species, the environment, and thinking of the future, thinking 700 or seven generations ahead, or let's say 700 years. It is a layered and complex enterprise, and these are system gains through methodical study of nature and vast quantities of data sifted through. And to note, I just want to take a moment just talking about exploration. Globally, humans have explored in one of two ways. One is which is looking at the healthiness of the tribe, 
what is not working there's some type of climate change happening and we need to kind of move forward or move to the side and doing that in a way that when their questions or problems arise we can look as a group and have a systemic structural way to do this healthfully and to figure out what we need to do a little differently. Then there is the other side of exploration, which is with capitalism and power and looking at the ego. And when this has typically occurred, thinking of Christopher Columbus, Magellan, thinking of the British colonizers, British explorers, this has ultimately led to often destruction. So if we look at global human history patterns for our entire human history, let's say 300,000 years, we can begin to see this split of what has worked and what maybe has had more destructive tendencies for all parties involved, including the species and the environment. Coming into our next slide, please take a look at this is Manhattan or Manhattan or Manhattan, New York City. It's a Lenape word meaning place that is an island. Here's a picture, um, a recreation of Manhattan in 1609 and then one of modern day New York City. There's just a difference, same humans. Um, humans biology hasn't changed for about 10,000 years. But well, one thing to look at is thinking about the systems in place here. How is the human, the human is an animal, and how is the human doing in one picture versus the other picture? Thinking of data, thinking of physical, emotional, mental, energetic, community, species, and the environment. How is one doing versus the other? And so we can begin to just look very objectively at what is working and what may need to be tweaked and not working. All right, so in regard to human care, modern science and scholarly work is looking at global earth-based indigenous communities and whether this is looking directly at indigenous practices or modern sciences are coming to this on their own. And I, you know, I could go on and on about this, but we'll just stick, let's say, with gratitude. Gratitude is often weaved in through many rituals, customs, working with plants, working with um, animals, working with many things. And neurosciences now in modern history are really understanding the brain, how gratitude helps the brain, how it changes hormone levels, how it changes blood pressure, how it can really have a big impact on the health of the human being. So whether this is coming along slowly or this is coming along by looking at indigenous peoples and practices, modern science is beginning to understand that some of what trying to reinvent the wheel doesn't need to happen because this has already been occurring for thousands of years. I'll be brief here as I know I'm running out of time. In regard to earth climate change and pressing disease questions, modern science is starting to look to indigenous cultures for help. And as I've already pointed out the help, we're also looking at like, for example, forest management. What was once shunned, we are now seeing, yes, possibly it is true when we apply Western methodology that how to take care of our forests, indigenous people might have some good clues on how to do that correctly. I come now to um, Robert Zubrin, a well-known engineer, The Case for Space, his book. And while he raises some really good points, um, there is um, some great concern here I have for him and thinkers like him. My concern is a wide sweep of completely ignoring the destruction of indigenous cultures and celebrating the impetus and methodology of explorers such as Christopher Columbus. Zuprin references multiple times Columbus and other explorers, including the slave trade, as something to be emulated and used and utilized in our exploration of space. I, will, I won't go into many of the quotes, but it's well looking at, for example, his explanation of how when colonists arrived, there was nothing in Kentucky and only modern ways helped to create a viable and profitable land known as Kentucky when it was being very well utilized by native people at that time and had been very healthy for thousands of years. So there's this wide manifest destiny, colonial intention in exploring and advancing technology that plows over indigenous cultures and plows over the earth. This line of thinking does not see these indigenous cultures as advanced, powerful, and effective with true scientific accuracy and effect efficacy. And even though we're starting to see that in sciences on earth, we are not currently seeing this in space. And so Zubrin and others advocate for plowing ahead within their mode of thinking into space now. But I pause, and for time's sake, I will be brief, but look at this space junk. We have not figured out how to deal with that. And we are creating more every day with possibly cataclysmic problems and issues to our satellites and even to human life on earth. 
looking at the emissions that have already been talked about. There are well-documented studies with just a few launches that we have going with the amount of toxic emissions into our atmosphere. So if we extrapolate this to thousands of launches each day, tens of thousands of launches each day, what is that going to do to our atmosphere if we don't get this under some type of management and understanding? I look at pulling out fracking and mining and pulling out the oil from our earth and what has this done in a few hundred years and where are we now with climate change and what we are seeing happening to communities being decimated by climate change and what about plastics and other components being introduced into our environment when plastics and chemicals of this nature were introduced were they aware that this would then make certain foods no longer edible would this be impacting our oceans and even that rainwater we cannot drink anymore because of plastics and we do not have a solution to this issue so we have created errors on Earth and are preparing to bring these same errors into space. And there's much we do not know about the universe. Like a sweater, when you start to pull at different threads, what will happen as chemicals go from one asteroid body to another, from one planetary body to another? We begin to pull and mine and frack. What will happen to this delicate balance that even looking at the, through the James Webb telescope, we are understanding how much we do not understand. What happens when four to 500 years from now, we have developed systems that suddenly implode on each other as they are doing on Earth? Where does this leave us now as a human species, as Earth, and definitely then as an interplanetary species? So there are many questions to be had. Hope for the future may rely on learning from older cultures that have dealt with many of the issues we are facing, and especially in our interest in space exploration, looking at our human structural systems, looking at our technology, how are we introducing this technology and the safest way to best explore exploring space. As an indigenous person, I am not advocating for no technology, nor am I advocating for no exploring or expansion. What I'm advocating for is learning from our past and not repeating mistakes. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks to, for, to everyone.